Hello, boys and girls in Comic Core Math 6. This is Mr. Giamini. Wanted to talk to you a little bit about Lesson 3.3, Adding Integers. Now, by the time you probably watch this video, we've already discussed this in class, but I just want to kind of give you a little bit more of a, a video, a little bit uh, some more support as to how to tackle this concept. Because in the past, I have noticed this is a challenging lesson uh, skill for sixth graders. So we'll kind of take a look at this. Now, there's a couple different ways to think about this. Now, when we add integers, at first, I think you need something a little more concrete so you can visualize this. And then as we get to the more concrete, you'll, it'll become a little more, you'll be able to apply a little bit better, and I, I, we can kind of transition to the more abstract. So if I want to take a look at a problem, and let's say I start with something like 3 plus, and when you're adding integers and you have a positive and negative, you'll probably see the negative in parentheses. It's just to kind of show you separation between this addition sign and the negative sign. So let's go 3 plus negative 7. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. I can use counters. So this 3 here, there's no negative in front of it, so that means it's a positive. So I have three positives, 1, 2, and 3. Now, you could kind of arrange them however you want. I'll, I'll put them in a, in a row here. So I have three positives, and I'm going to add those to seven negatives. So I have 1, 2, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, now, what happens if I'm doing these? Essentially, I have three plus seven, so every positive and negative cancel each other out. Kind of like when we're solving an equation and we have x plus three equals seven, we want to get rid of that three, so we, we subtract the three, so it cancels out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I have three positives over here, so and I have seven negatives. So I'm just going to pair these positives with a, a negative to cancel them out. So that would cancel that out, that would cancel that out, and that would cancel that out. So essentially, these are all now just gone. They've canceled each other out. A plus and a minus cancel each other out. So all I'm really left with is these four chips, and they're all negative. So three plus the negative seven really gives me negative four. If I want to think about that on a number line, it would look something like this. Here's my zero. I always like to start at zero. And each of these are a tick mark on the number line. So to the left of zero is your negatives. And as I move to the left, they get smaller. So negative eight is smaller than negative one. As I move to the right of the zero, I am getting larger. And we've known this, that five is larger than one, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if I want to look at this problem here, I've started at positive 3. So here I am in the number line, and I'm at a positive 3, so I'd move three places to the right. One, two, three. So I am right here. This is my starting point, if you want to think of it that way. Now, what's happened is I have now lost 7. Or if you want to think about it as temperature, it's 3 degrees now. That temperature is going to drop 7 degrees. So if it's going to drop, it's a negative. I move to the left on the number line, and I move to the left 7 spaces because, it's, again, it's negative. So I move 1. Two, let me change color so we can see it's a little better. I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'll end up right here. And I end up on the negative four. So we can think about it as chips. We can think about it as a number line. But when I'm adding integers, whatever works for you, but three plus negative seven is giving me negative four. And I've shown that and modeled that two different ways. Now let's try another. A problem here, and let me put my negative chips back and my positive chips back. Let's see here if I can move these faster. Uh, let's try another one, and again, I'm going to keep the numbers say, uh, simple, because if you understand this concept, it doesn't matter how large I make the numbers, you'll be able to apply it to more complex problems with larger, with larger numbers. Let's just go with, I'll put the negative first here. Let's go with negative 6 plus, uh, let's go with 8. Okay. Now, notice how the negative is in, it's the first term in this expression, so that's why I don't have to put it in parentheses. Now, if I do put it in parentheses, it's okay, not a problem, but I'm not going to mix this negative up with this plus sign, so I don't really necessarily need the negative sign, or the, I'm sorry, the parentheses. So let's use my chips first. So I have negative 6, so I have 6 negatives. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And now I'm going to add that. I'm going to add this, these negative 6, to 8. And they are all positive. So 1, 2, 
three, four, five, six, seven. I'm running out of room here, and let's go with eight. Now, typically, I like to put these in a row, so that's like that. Okay. Now, as I did with the previous problem, I can either bring the negative six over here or bring the eight over here to cancel them out. So let's bring the positives over here. So these two cancel each other out. This positive will cancel that negative out. This positive will cancel that negative out. This won't cancel this out. Let me move these down here so we're not to get confused. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, good. Here's another one that cancels out. Here's another one that cancels out. So if I look at this problem, these positives all cancel out. These six positives cancel out these six negatives. So gone, 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 gone. So I have nothing there now. What I do have left are these two positives. So that means negative six plus eight will give me two. If I want to see that on a number line, again, I will start at zero. Think about it as the origin of the number line if you want to, since we're doing coordinate planes as well in this chapter. Negative six. So let's count backwards to the left. I shouldn't say the back. Let's count to the left six spots because I'm getting smaller, negative six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I have started right here on my number line at negative six. Now I'm going to move eight places, and there are positives, so I'll move to the right, eight places to the right of the number line from where I started, negative six. So I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I end up right here on the number line. That is my final resting spot. So if I take a look, I am at two. This answer supports the answer I've done up here with the counters. So I feel confident about my answer. Now, take a look at this without the counters, without everything else. Let's say, oh, I don't want to do that. Sorry about that. Let's just take a look at a problem, and let's say I don't have any counters or a number line. Because as you move on, you feel more comfortable with this, you're not going to want to make a number line for all these because it becomes too time consuming and it's gonna require you to do a, l a lot more work than you really maybe need to. This is good to start with, but just like when you started adding three plus two, you had three fish plus two bears or something like that, you don't need to have those manipulators anymore. So if I take a look at this problem, let's just write one here. Let's say I have 16 plus negative six. Well, I kind of look at this not necessarily as an addition problem, but a subtraction problem. Because I started 16, and I, because it's negative, I'm actually taking 6 away from this. So in my head, I'm going, hey, what is 16 minus 6? Well, that gives me 10. So I say 10. Now I go back to the original. So I say, okay, what's the absolute value of both of these numbers? Well, the absolute value of 16 is 16. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6. Which one of these has the larger absolute value? Well, it's 16. And in the original problem, 16 was positive, so my answer will be positive. And notice when I have a positive answer, I do not put a plus sign there. It's understood that if it is a positive number, that the answer does not need a plus sign, because there will be no uh, marking or plus or negative plus sign to say. So I understand that this is positive. Uh, let's try another example real quick. Let's say I had 18 plus negative 24. Now, signs are opposite. So I started with $18, I just lost $24. Or, hey, I had $18, I just borrowed $24 from my mom. So not only do I have to pay the $18 bucks back, but I also have another amount of money I have to pay her. So I'm going to, instead of adding these, really subtract because the signs are opposite. So if I want to think my number line, I'm at 18, and then I'm going to the left 24 places. Now, I'm going to subtract them like this. I will put the larger number on top, like we've been doing since probably kindergarten. 24 minus 8 gives me 6. Now, it's important. Well, which number or which sign does this get? Is it a positive 6? Is it a negative 6? Well, again, I go back to the problem. Let's put absolute value brackets around this. What's the absolute value of 18? Well, it is 18 away from 0. What's the absolute value of negative 24? Well, it's 24. Which one of these two integers have the greater absolute value or the large one? Well, it is 24. What type of sign? does the 24 have to begin with? It's a negative. So my answer will be negative. So it's negative 6. Do one more example here. Let's say that they're both negative. So let's go with negative 7 plus negative 8. And again, if I visualize this on the number line, I'm at negative 7. I'm going to add negative 8 to it. So that means I'm getting even further away on the left. If I think about it with chips, I have negative 7, and then I have negative 8. Well, none of those will cancel out. They're all negative. 
So when I have signs that are the same as here, they're both negative, I simply just then add them. 8 plus 7 gives me 15. Now, both signs are negative, so it'll be a negative 15. If I want to think about this too, as far as with the absolute value, which one of these has a greater absolute value? Well, the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. The absolute value of negative 8 is 8. Which one has a larger absolute value? It's 8. What kind of sign it was 8 to begin with? It was a negative, so my answer is a negative 15. Hope this helps you out. Take care. Bye-bye.